Hey all, this is going to be a quick video about getting started with R Markdown within R Studio. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves that when we're working with R Studio, this is the one we will want to open, not just R, but we want to open R Studio. So we'll double click there, whatever operating system you're dealing with. R Studio loads up. I have tried this time to uh, put my console down in the bottom left where it normally is, I think for all of you. I think in the previous video, I had it a little bit, you know, uniquely configured, but I don't wanna try to mess any of us up. So we got our console in the bottom left. That's where we can do any of the math that we might need. We got our packages in the bottom right, along with help and some other things. We'll get to plots later, that'll be super fun. So today we're gonna to be working with R Markdown. Now that's an extra package that we'll need to install. So we'll go ahead and click install on the packages tab in the bottom right. And if you haven't done this already, we'll just type out R Markdown and be sure to install that and let R go ahead and think through that. That one wasn't too bad. If it's any worse than that for any of you all, you should just go ahead and click, yes, I want to install all these extra things, or, you know, kind of, if it prompts you with any kind of pop-up, you just say, yes, go ahead, move along, whatever it really requests, whatever it asks you to do such that it can progress. So once you have R Markdown installed, it shouldn't be too bad. You'll go up here in the top left to this new file icon, You'll, drop, you'll click the little drop down button and you'll say, let's R open a new R Markdown document. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll give it a title. Now we're gonna create our course notes here. Uh, well, eventually we'll create our course notes. I'll save course notes for a separate video, but for now, this is what we're gonna get to uh, eventually. For now, we'll just kind of go ahead and pretend like we're gonna do that. The default output, I'm going to suggest HTML. You can see that's the recommended output from uh, RStudio as well. PDF is my next preferred option, but it might present some problems for some of you on some of your machines. I will not accept Microsoft Word uh, documents in this class. So I highly recommend HTML. If you want to go through a little bit of a headache on your computer, PDF will probably work eventually and I just don't have Microsoft Word, so I can't deal with those files myself. Click OK, and what RStudio gives you is a nice template R Markdown document. So you can see here, it's kind of populated this file with a bunch of different text. Right up top, you can see that's where we specified our title, where we specified author. It knows the date. It says as an output, we want an HTML document. This is all kind of meta information about the document itself. Below this meta information is where we start to get really into the, what is an R Markdown document doing for us? And I'm gonna pause here from the R Markdown document itself to explain to you what R Markdown is after. So you all are probably used to Microsoft Word documents where if you type some stuff out and you make some words bold, that is what you get. What you see is what you get. They call them WYSIWYG editors. I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase. R Markdown seeks to produce similar documents as output, but it is not a what you see is what you get sort of editor. Instead, you have to put little symbols to specify how you want R Markdown to show up in the output. So here in the source document, we can specify things like this with two asterisks, that's shift eight, surrounding a word, and that will make the word bold in the output document. Or if you put uh, left and right angle brackets around a URL, you can make URLs, you can make clickable links in the output document. Now, what really separates R Markdown from something like Microsoft Word is these sort of gray boxes. We call these code chunks. 
Now this code chunk is important, but it's not super meaningful to us yet. So if we scroll down a little bit further, this is probably going to be the first most informative code chunk. The benefit of our Markdown documents is you can put our code right inside the source document. And when you knit the source document, it will put the output of that code within the output of document. Let's go ahead and see that in action. So we'll go up here, we'll click knit, or if you want to change the output format, you can choose yourself. We're gonna to go to HTML as we specified earlier. I'll ask you to save your document. I'm going to put it in a math 314, 315 folder. And I'm going to name it as specified in the syllabus, last name underscore course notes. Well, it looks like I already have a file in there, so I'll just replace that one. You guys won't have to do that. Some magic stuff happens within our studio. And here's what I mean when I say the output document. On the left of my screen is the input document, and on the right is the output. Notice the double hashtags made us a header. Notice the left and right angle brackets gave us the link, as I said earlier, and the double asterisk surrounding a word gave us bold. So on the left, on the input, it's not necessarily what you see is what you get. You have to write sort of this extra notation to specify how you want the output to look. That seems kind of like a headache, but it turns out to be really beneficial for us in the end. The most important feature of our Markdown documents is when you include code in a code chunk, not only does the code show up in the output document, but the output of what that code produces shows up in the output document. So none of this like copying and pasting from R into Microsoft Word sort of business. This is giving us one way to, and this is the verb they use, knit together our text, that's like all of this, with code and the code's output. We can knit together text, code, and code output. The coolest part is you can even include plots, and it will put that plot right there in your output document. So I encourage you all to take some time at the end of this video, kind of look through the input, the R Markdown file, and the output, and make sure you know how each of these two pieces kind of fit together. One good question that you should try to answer yourself is, with this echo equals false up here, what happens in the output document? That's a really good question you should try to answer on your own. And if you can't get it on your own or you want to confirm an answer, post up on Piazza or come to office hours uh, this week. The last thing I'm going to give you about our Markdown documents is up here in Tools. Let's see, did I get that right? Nope. Up here in Help. There are cheat sheets, and specifically, there is an R Markdown cheat sheet. That opens up a new tab in your browser, and it gives you all sorts of helpful tips on how to get very specific pieces of the R Markdown document. Like some of the ones I showed you here were two hashtags before some words gives us a header. And two asterisks around a word makes that word bold. So this is a very um, concise and simple cheat sheet that explains to you what the input, what sort of input syntax gives you a specific output. So please all take some time, look at the input, make sure you understand how that works on the output. This is the tool we will be using for all reports and all course notes throughout the semester.